All right, good morning, everyone. Good morning. All right, can you hear me okay? Yeah. All right, great. Uh, I guess I better leave that there. It looks like somebody took a lot of time to put it together. All right, um, first of all, it's great to be here this morning, and I just want to thank uh, Ms. Retha Corbett for uh, her inviting me to be a part of this uh, great event here. Uh, she is uh, an alumni of the Power Story Workshop that uh, we have began a few years ago, and so it's so great to see her taking her uh, speaking skills and her ability to put on events and uh, allow you to be blessed this morning. I'm excited about what we're going to do. There's a handout coming around, and I want you to get that because I understand you have to have three, at least three takeaways, okay? Well, this handout, you will be just fine with all the takeaway stuff. All right. Uh, Again, my name is Dwight Pledger, and I have uh, been professionally speaking for about the past eight years. I have been speaking for probably over 25 years. I uh, began to speak in church settings and share my story and my testimony. And then in 2004, I connected with uh, Mr. Les Brown, and my speaking career really took, uh, it really took off from that point on. Been in over... 50 states, uh, 50 cities across the United States, and have also spoken internationally. So I've been really blessed in terms of opportunities, and so I'm just so grateful even for this opportunity to share this morning. Here's what I want, here's where we want to go, and hopefully you have your handout now. And I want to just make a statement. Of course, we're going to talk about uh, communication skills, and I believe when we talk about the power that's within and the gifts and the talents that many of us have within, uh, I want to share this with everybody, is that everybody in here has the ability to communicate. Do you agree with that? Raise your hands if you agree. All right, now, here's what I want to say. You cannot not communicate, okay? You cannot not communicate. Even in so-called not communicating, you are uh, uh, transferring a message in terms of things that you're about. So communications is a very valuable thing. And here's what I share with people. They go, oh, I'm not a good public speaker. And normally we're standing in a public place when they're telling me that. And I say, uh, you're not a what? Not a public speaker. Yes, you are. We're in public and you're speaking, all right? <laughs> so anyway, it's like, gotcha. And so what I, what I really like to, to put across is that everyone's communication skills can be improved. And it's going to take some, some W-O-R-K, but all of us in this room can communicate. And when it comes to a story or having something to say, every one of us has a very powerful story down on the inside. So my agenda for today, and you can go ahead and start writing here on this first uh, talking point under you cannot not communicate. I want you to write the word distract. Somebody say distract. distract. All right, distract. I'm going to share three things with you about this thing, distract. And then I want you to put in the next space, dispute. D-I-S-P-U-T-E. <laughs> okay. Dispute. And then in the third one, I want you to put inspire. This is kind of a slice out of our total speaker workshop that a friend of mine, Dan Smith, and I conduct uh, periodically, and we normally have them here in the Moreno Valley area. So distract, dispute, and inspire. Many of you came in here with a story in your head, or you came in here with a certain mindset. You had some, maybe some preconceived notions about what this experience was going to be about. So when we talk about the things that, that great communicators do, when they stand before an audience, these are three things that you want to be mindful of. You know that people are coming in with a certain mindset. You know what you have to bring to offer to that audience. So your job as you stand up is to distract everyone in the room from the story that they came into the room with. And you want to distract them in a way like, for example, almost to the degree to where if someone was standing at the back of the room and they were looking in another direction and I said, hey, hey, 
And they would, what would they do? They would turn around and they would look. They would, they would, whatever they were concentrating on at that moment, that would have to have to take a backseat to the priority of the distraction that's in the front of the room. Now that was an extreme example of an agenda that a speaker ought to have. You want to be able to <coughs> engage your audience, because when I shouted like that, trust me, everybody looked up here. Okay, even the person that was looking that way. <clears throat> so we want to distract and then we want to, once I get your attention, then for example, if I did uh, hail someone from the back of the room and they got, I got their attention, I couldn't just stand there and kind of look at them, you know, like, <laughs> it's like, you know, what was that all about? They're going to be getting on the phone call to 911 saying, we got one here, okay? <laughs> this, guy, this guy is crazy. You bring the white coat with you, okay? So once I get your attention, then I need to be able to have something to share with you. So what is it that I want to do? I want to, my agenda then in terms of disputing is once I get your attention, I want to share information that will dispute. One of the things I want to dispute is the fact of your limited limitations of what's possible for your life. I want to give you information and let you know that you can have a larger vision of what's possible in your life. So I begin to share things with you like I'm going to do today that's hopefully going to expand your mindset. It's going to go down in there and, and wake up some things on the inside and allow you to know that there is greatness on the inside of you. That you have something of value that you can bring to the planet and communicate to the planet. Are you with me this morning? Yes. All right, great. And then, of course, I want to inspire you. Once I have disputed the argument, once I have given you information that will cause you to shift your mindset into another direction, then I want to inspire you. I want to basically say that what you just discovered about yourself, what you just saw in the context of the hearing of the words, you need to know that it's possible and that you can do it, that you can make it happen. Because many of the things that we're talking about doing, if we, if we realize and know that there's nothing new under the sun, that somebody someplace has done some of the things that you're thinking about trying to do, then that lets you know that you can go from a place of knowing that whatever it is that you have a dream about, whatever it is is your goal, your aspirations, you need to know that it's possible for you. Because it's possible for them, it's possible for you. And that's a place of integrity you can take off from knowing that what you're pursuing is a worthy goal to pursue and that it's possible for you to achieve whatever it is you're going after. So distract, dispute, and inspire. Have I distracted anyone from whatever they were thinking of? <laughs> <laughs> Especially that guy back there. But anyway, uh, and, and, and then giving you an argument for the possibilities in your life. Then the next thing here is, because what I'm really doing, uh, Rita, is, is basically dealing with the mindset this morning. Because you're going to have a long day. You're going to be uh, given all kinds of powerful, valuable information. You're going to be exposed to some dynamic and some really powerful speakers today. And so you want to maximize this opportunity. You've chosen to take aside from your schedule. You've chosen to invest. And here you are. So since you've taken a time out from the hustle and bustle of life, while you're here, maximize it. I heard him talking about networking and meeting people that you don't know. This is the time to take those risks and go out of your comfort zone and do what sometimes is even difficult for me to do, is just walk up to somebody and introduce yourself and share with them who you are. And then you're going to talk about something else. Let's go to the next thing. Three questions three questions life is asking. Now, I'm, I'm reframing these three questions because they were asked of me when I went to my first Les Brown speaker training back in 2004. And he was doing a training with his mentor, um, Mike, Mike Williams, who is an awesome trainer. He designs a lot of the programs that Les Brown uses. And they, they approached us, speakers that were there, aspiring speakers, with three questions. And the three questions really, one of the questions really unnerved me, and I'll talk about that when we get to that question. But this is a question that he said, 
that every audience is asking of the speaker before them. So I'm going to reframe it a little bit and say these are really questions that I think life is asking of us because we're talking about the greatness from within, the power that you have that's baby, basically for some of us may be untapped power. And so the first question is, who are you? Write that down. It's right there on your outline. Who are you? And go ahead and fill in the next question. What do you have? What do you have? That's number two. Who are you? What do you have? And finally, why should anybody care? That's the one that got me, you know. <laughs> That's the hard one right there, okay? So we're going to try to make it a little easier today. So who are you? That's a question that really begs an answer. And this morning, of course, we're going to answer that question in the privacy of our own minds. Who are you? No, I see, I see your name badge. And, and I remember who you said you were when we did the little networking. And you said you were president and CEO of the greatest company in the world. And that you were a, the dynamic this or a great that. Whatever it is you were trying to share with me. And so I got that. But I still have the question, who are you? Who are you behind the name tag? Who are you behind the title? Who are you even behind the reputation? Who are you behind the image, the persona, the public self? Who's behind that person, OK? <laughs> and it just reminds me of the, the, the Wizard of Oz. And some of you are baby boomers. And you remember we used to watch The Wizard of Oz every year <laughs> around the same time, OK? And so we watched that. And, and every time, it was just so fast. I used to love to watch The Wizard of Oz. How many of you ever saw The Wizard of Oz? Come on, with a show of hands. OK, good. I got a, a good number of people. Well, the idea there is, is that this Wizard of Oz was portraying himself to be some great somebody. And everybody, he had, his, his, the buzz around, you know, uh, uh, the community was that, you know, the Oz, we're going to see the Oz. He had all the answers and all of the problems could be solved. He was this great, 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 this public persona was out there. And it was real interesting, and I'm still talking about who are you and, you know, who's behind the words. So it came to a situation where Dorothy and her friends were standing before the Wizard of Oz. And he's there, and there's just all this smoke and billows, and oh, who is this that darkens my counsel? Who is this that comes before me? And they were like trembling at the, at, the, at the voice of the one, because in their minds, they had magnified this, this person, this image. And then little Toto. <laughs> they got, it's always the little things that kind of expose us, OK? So little Toto goes back. And he pulls back the curtain. And, and, and when he pulled back the curtain, people realized that this, this one that everybody was fearing and in awe of was just some little old man back there working little contraptions, you know? And so the idea there is like, whoa, wait a minute. You're not this great somebody that everybody has portrayed you to be. In other words, they got behind the curtain, they got behind the title, they got behind the reputation, and they were able to see who the Oz really was. So who are you? And next question is this. We're just doing mindset stuff up in here today. I just want to stir up your mind because you're going to get a lot of information to answer a lot of these questions today. What do you have? Who are you and what do you have? That's a question. What, what do you have? If I gave you 10 minutes to write down a list, I'm not going to do that, obviously. But if I gave you 10 minutes to do that, you, you, would, you hopefully would be able to write some things down about what you have. What do you have? Do you, does everybody have something up in here? <laughs> <laughs> Well, let's, let's just make it real easy. I, I made a statement earlier that everybody has a story. 
Everybody has a story. Now, you may not have shared your story publicly or before an audience because of the fear of speaking and all of that kind of thing, but you have a story. And guess what? You have a powerful story. You have a dynamic story down on the inside. You have something of worth, something of value, something that, listen to this, that can be a blessing to someone else. Something that can help someone along the planet. You brought something with you. I like the quote by Miles Monroe who said, he said, the wealthiest place on the planet, he said, is not in the vast oil fields of the Middle East. It's not even in the gold and diamond mines of South Africa. He said, the wealthiest place on the planet is the graveyard. The graveyard. He said, for there you will find dreams never realized, books never written, songs never composed, gifts, talents, and abilities that never reached their full potential. Men and women who lived and died with their greatness still in them. Now that's powerful. And so it begs another question. If you died today, what would die with you? What gift, what talent, what ability, what potential would you take with you to your grave? The fact is, those that have died, we can't do anything about them. But what we can do is begin to look at our own lives and decide that we will not take our greatness with us. As a matter of fact, we're gonna do like my friend Les Brown says, we're gonna live full and die empty. Die having deposited on the planet everything that you were brought here to share with the universe. So you're here today and there's a lot of knowledge, there's a lot of talent, there's a lot of abilities, there's a lot of hopes, there are a lot of dreams, there are a lot of aspirations in this room. And so while you have this time out, be mindful of, of, of allowing yourself to discover many of those things. But after the discovery is made, after the discovery is made, get up and go do something about what you have discovered. So who are you, what do you have, and then this very difficult question that unnerved me when I heard it at the training was, and why should anybody care? And I think that is the one that we can get through those first two questions, but when it gets to, is what I have of value? Is what I have, can it really make a difference? And, and, and the biggest challenge is, is can I pull off taking what I have, presenting it to those that need it, and allowing it to transform and change their lives. Because at the end of the day, we want whatever it is we brought to the planet, we want it to benefit and help someone. Does that make sense? Yes. Interesting questions, right? Yes. Probably haven't asked yourself these three questions in a while. So I want you to be mindful of the fact that what you're hearing today, a lot of what you're going to hear today, some of it's going to be new information. Some of it won't be new information, but it might pre be presented in a different way. Because you've got to remember, if you heard something a year ago, two years ago, five years ago, ten years ago, it had its value at that moment. And what you need to know is that you are not the same person today, even that you were yesterday. So, don't, so don't, don't zone people out when you say, oh, I know where they're going with this. So I can check out. I can, go to, I can check my text messages. I know y'all got the, that impulse. To, <laughs> some of y'all got it on vibrating. You can't figure out, I wonder who that is trying to get a hold of me. No, 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 no. Put all that on hold. This is your day. This is the day that you are mindful of some things that you need to get where you're going and what you need to do. So who are you, what do you have, and why should anyone care? I've been sharing a story of uh, recovery from addiction and how I went through a seven-year addiction. I've been sharing that story for 25 years. 
from the, from the moment that I got free of that seven year crack cocaine addiction and was reunited with my wife and children after a five and a half year separation. Yeah, five and a half years. After five and a half years, ladies, <laughs> my wife was at the airport and met and picked me up after I had abandoned her and my children. Yeah, she's a powerful woman. She's not here today, but give her a round of applause anyway. <laughs> been sharing that story of forgiveness and redemption and restoration. You said for 25 years? Yes, for 25 years, and I ain't got tired yet. <laughs> Why? Because it's something that I experience, it's something that I have, it's something that in the context of sharing it in audiences all over the country and internationally, it has brought hope and healing to a lot of people. So, who are you, what do you have, and why should anybody care? Because what you have down on the inside, they should care because the information that you have to give and to share, even if it's not on the platform, it might be one-on-one, -on -one, can make a difference in their lives. And ultimately, all of us want to be living a life that is of contribution and making a difference. So what is your social contribution? What is it that you're going to give outside of your maybe concentric circle of people that are comfortable and you're comfortable with them? What is going to be your social contribution? So I want to end with this. I, I was reading a book, uh, I think it's A Millionaire Mindset by Brendan Burchard. Anybody ever heard of him? Okay. Powerful young man. I mean, young man, but just gifted. He is a marketer par excellence, okay? And look, that young man seems like he can sell anything, okay? But he wrote a very powerful book. And in the book, he shares a story of how he had gotten in a car accident and nearly lost his life. And while in the hospital and reflecting, he came up with three questions. This is about questions today, because this is all about interrogating and, and digging up and, 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 and discovering. He had three questions of reflection, and they're right here on your, on, your, on your paper here, on your handout. And the first question he said that he, he, he said at the end of life, as he began to think about, you know, what would the answer to these three questions be? The first question he asked, and we can ask, we can ask it in terms of being able to look back on our lives at the end of it and see uh, what we were able to accomplish. And then we can even ask it today. And the first question is, he asked, did I live? Did I live? When it gets down to the end and you have the presence of mind to think about it, that's a, that's a very interesting question to ask. Did I live? Not was I getting up in the morning, putting on clothes, breathing and walking and talking, but did I live? Because there's more to life than just kind of some of the, 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 the mandatory things that we do just to kind of show up in the world. So it's a good question to think about. Did I live? So then we ask it in the present tense, and, and I would ask you today, uh, are you living? And you would say, am I living? Am I, am I existing? <laughs> am I just kind of showing up? Or am I really living? Part of this experience is evidence that you are mindful of how you're living and how your living can be changed. The second question is, and this is a very good one here, is he asked, did I love? Did I live and did I love? And we're talking about love on a deeper level here. Did I love unconditionally? So you don't have to, you don't have to wait till the end to think about and consider these questions because today you can ask yourself, am I loving? Am I loving in terms of people that would approach me? <laughs> Or am I loving in terms of how I approach others? You just answer that in the privacy of your own mind. 
And the final question as I get ready to take my seat, <laughs> and the, the, this is really a good one, is he, he asked this third question. He said, did I matter? Mm. Did I matter? And today I think that question can be really a, a powerful thing to consider as you go forth during this day. Because there are many people that don't think they matter. So when you ask the question, do I matter? You don't have anything that just pops right up. You have to kind of think about it. Do I really matter? Anybody ever thought about that? Anybody ever thought about their significance? Do I matter? And that's something to think about. <laughs> I'm thinking about it now, even while I'm talking to you. Do I matter? Do they really care that I'm over here talking? I'm, are they getting it today? <laughs> Do I matter? So the closing story is this. There was a man that was on his deathbed. And he was really concerned as to whether um, he had lived a life of significance. He was really concerned about that. So as he was on his deathbed, he was, he, was, he was only, he was holding the nurse's hand and he was clutching it tightly. And he looked her in the face, right, right in the eye, she looked at him. He said, he said, he said, I just want to know that my life made a difference, that I made a difference. And so the nurse kind of consoled him a little bit and let his hand go. And the story, as the story goes, the man found out, because he was an organ donor, he found out before he died that some of the organs that he was going to leave were a perfect match to someone that had been in an automobile accident and needed an organ transplant in order to live. And so when they came back and shared that information with that man, when we talk about rest in peace, this man died knowing beyond a shadow of a doubt that his living, his life had made a difference. So I say to you, let this be an opportunity to get information, to get knowledge, to begin to build and connect and form relationships that will allow you to say at the end of the day that your life has made a difference. God bless you.